top of the morning from Chittagong, Bangladesh. It's really early, but today we're doing something very special. We're going to be checking out something that's very special to this region of Bangladesh. It's something known as Mejban. It's a kind of food. We're going to explain it all to you soon. But this is the place. It's called Barcode Food Junction. And this place is very famous in Chittagong. And they make something called Mejban, which is something that you can really only find in Bangladesh. Actually, mainly in this Chittagong area. So let's go inside and we're going to see how the whole process works. All right, so this is where the magic happens. Hello, assalamualaikum. All right, here is the cow. This is the cutting process. Oh wow! So my man over here. Hello, assalamualaikum. Can we see how they cut it? Oh. So something very special about mezban is that they take the cow that day and they cut it, as you can see. Hello, assalamualaikum. Wow! And they use every part of the cow. So this guy's cutting the ribs. This guy's cutting the intestines. There's some different parts of the cow here. So you can see, they actually use... Thank you, brother. Thank you. So the cows that they use are sourced that day. Hello, assalamualaikum. And they actually uh, use very, very fresh meat. And that's what, that's what makes Mezban very special, yeah. right? Yeah. So, all right, we're going to head inside now to the... They've allowed us to come in and see how they process and do this. And we're going to talk to the guy. Is the owner here also? No, no, no. He's not gonna be here? No, okay. he's coming. Okay, he's coming. We'll talk to him as well. Whoa, and this is the whole operation. Wa alaikum as -salam. Wow. Look at how many people are working here. And it's hot back here because of these fires. So, what is this? This is Hezbani Dal, I think. Dal? Yeah. Hello, assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? What are you making here? What is this? Beef dairy. Beef? Dairy. Dairy. Dairy, dairy. Dairy. What is, which, which part of the beef? This is. Yeah? Cow? Look at this. Some fresh. Okay. These ladies are the ones who peel the onions, they take the chilies, they make the mix that they eventually use for the mezbah. Am I right? Okay. You can see, they got the coriander, they got the chili, onions, and the smells in here are so good. It, sm it already smells good. Look at the meat, red meat. Uh, and then they take, they take the meat and they wash it up really nicely. So as you can see guys, over here the process is very clean and very, very sanitary. Um, this guy who's been running this restaurant, I think he's been doing it for over 20 years or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So he's been doing it a long time. So <clears throat> we're actually going to get a chance to talk to him as well. So how many people usually are part of this process? Uh, 25 people 25 people at a time. Okay. And that's what it takes to prepare food for... Yeah. How many people do they serve with this food every day? How many people? Yeah. Total employee plus. 500 plus. Every day. Wow, wow, mashallah. Very nice. 500, 500 plus people a day, guys. That's a lot of people. And that's why they need 25 people to prepare this. By the way, they start this around 7, 6, 7 in the morning. And the process is not finished until like what, 12 o'clock? Yeah, I got to 10.30 to 11. Cool. So as you can see, man, this, this is a real legit facility. Hopefully the owner comes soon and we'll ask him some questions about it as well. Look at how big this is. It's very hot. I don't know how they work here. Guys, I've been here for two minutes and I'm already sweating, as you can see. These guys are going to be in here for hours. It's not an easy job, man. It's a work of regular. Huh? It's a work of regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do this every day. I don't know how, man. People work very hard in this world, man. Some salt. 
the main ingredient. You need salt. Ginger. Ginger paste. Garlic. Yes, you need garlic. <laughs> Very nice. Wow, that's a lot of zira. It smells so good. Man, these spices are like real official spices. By the way, you like my cap? Misty zira. Misty zira. zira. Sweet. 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 Masala. Look at all the colors, man. So cool. Red chili? Red chili. Yeah. So, can you ask him, how does he know how much you have to put in? He's not using that budget. Like free up, bro. He's just been doing it a long time. Oh, okay, okay. How long has he been doing this? Ten years. Oh, that's why. He understands. This guy's not even using a measuring cup. He's just doing it with his eyes and his hands. He knows how much you need. Red, red chili. Yeah. Then you have some onions, of course. The key ingredient, you need onions. This is how they make the fire. What is that? What kind of coal is that? Can you get charcoal? Yeah, charcoal. Charcoal? The big pieces of charcoal is to make the fire. And then they're going to shake these pots and put it on top of these fires. Takes two people. One guy's got to hold the pot and he's going to mix it. Wow, look at all the colors coming together. You can see how this is going to look when it's done. Hopefully we have a little bit of an orange color. And man, when I tell you the smells that, you're, that this pot is emitting, I'm getting hungry. So now, as you can see, the food is on the fire. It's going to take time to cook. How long does one pot take to cook? Two hours. Two hours. So it's going to have to sit on the fire for two hours. Two guys, they take the stilts and then they move it over here. Uh, they got the whole thing down to a science. Now it's gonna cook. So guys, one thing that's very important to note about this place is that, I don't know if you noticed from the start, like where they're cutting the meat, the kitchen itself, how they're processing everything, it's very, very clean compared to like street foods and stuff. Like this, this place, they follow a lot of hygienic rules. And they don't, a lot of places in Bangladesh don't really follow these the way these people do it as far as hygiene is concerned and look at my man the cow they slaughter they slaughter two of these a day yeah. guys this guy that I'm about to introduce you to you he is the owner, the founder, the facilitator of this beautiful facility. He's been running this business for how long? It's around eight years now. Eight years now, yeah. okay. And please explain to us what you were explaining. Uh, I, I want the people to know. You know, you have visited the kitchen. This yeah. is how we do it every day. Every day. I mean, there is nothing different than somebody is here to shoot. We don't change anything. We maintain the way we've been doing this since last many years. I mean, see, this is a traditional dish. And Mespani has been cooking this, I mean Chirigong is cooking this dish over probably 100 years, I don't know. Wow. So this is how they used to cook even 50-60 years back. This is the way. And so you kept this tradition. Exactly, the tradition, the, the way of cooking, the ingredients, you know, organic spices, yeah. every single thing is maintained. The way we've been maintaining it since 
the 18th and the spices are from certain garden i mean certain area it's a special special spice and that's what gives it a very distinct taste right exactly now if you don't mind me asking what how did you get into this business how 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 did you is it something that your mother used to make like how, how did you find this food and get into this so basically i i was into food business i used to work for something that we didn't have in chitagol my first food business venture was barcode cafe where we make good quality coffee okay and barcode is the first ever cafe that served good coffee in chitagol ah, okay. and then you know this is the most traditional food of our city anybody visits chitagol they must give a try for mezbani okay. anybody from abroad or another city or you know anyone visiting chitagol but we did not have any particular restaurant where they sell mezbani food 7 days a week then i wanted to you know i didn't know, i didn't take this as business i took it as you know as a service to people that will be visiting chitagol to keep the tradition going exactly yeah okay, okay. traditional food in restaurant so that anybody want to have any time they can have it maintaining the traditional taste and 100% 100% and one thing i did notice is um, obviously he was speaking about the hy- hygienic um, and i mentioned this earlier too and i think that's why you guys are as successful as you are because i think many businesses that i've seen in bangladesh they haven't they aren't operated like this you know and yeah. uh, i'm not trying to bash others businesses but what i'm saying is i think the the way you said it like how this is not something special that you're doing because we're video this is what you do every single day every single day yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and um you can really see that you know he takes pride in his business and anybody who runs business you understand that when you do it with your heart and you do it with passion and you do it with love that's when you find success you don't have to chase the money the money finds you but when you do something that you love and you're passionate about then you will find success i'm very excited to try your food brother and thank you very much for your visit now thank you so much for having us can you just briefly introduce yourself for the video also give your name and yeah, just a little bit of background if you'd like where you're from so i'm mumzul hok i was like i've been here in chitagong i was not born in chitagong i was born in uae but uh, i moved to bangladesh when i was a kid and i was very passionate about the food and do something new I've been doing this business since last 10 years I should say and I introduced few brands in Chitagong and every single brand is doing very well my first brand was Barco Cafe then I came up with a brand called Barbish Town where we are selling street food in uh, making in hygienic way then the third brand we started is Mezzan Halayu where we are selling the traditional mezbani then our fourth brand is very interesting brand beer chotola is uh, where we are selling bengali food, traditional bengali food and also traditional wedding food ah okay. so this is how we are so doing. you can eat the wedding food but you don't have to be at a wedding exactly that's what we do okay. and i have another restaurant another eating uh, place which you call dairy wala where you are selling the dairy fast food you know ah. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, a lot of businesses. Luckily, our all brands are doing very well and one of a kind. Every brand is one of a kind. And your family is originally from Chittagong? Yeah. Okay. Originally. Mother, father, both. Yeah. But my family is not from the business is not food. No. Our family business is plastic. We okay. manufacture plastic furniture. Okay. Plastic pipe, plastic doors. Yes, yes, yes. So you you started this business with right? You know, there's something and I I mentioned this before in my vlogs. something very special about business owners who started their business from scratch this is not something that he was passed down from his parents um there's something very special about people who have seen the other side who start their business from the ground up and that's why this guy has such a humble and nice attitude as well for being as successful of a business owner as he is so we're going to be trying some food soon guys i'll show you what the taste and everything is like i'm so hungry after watching everybody make the food so i'm very excited so now The main cooking that we saw before is done. But what they're going to do now is make a smaller fire. This guy is doing. And they'll move the pots to the smaller fire which they're going to do right now. And what this is basically they're going to slow cook 
the same thing that they were cooking over that big fire, they're gonna let it sit. And what that basically allows it to do is pick up more flavor and, you know, slow cooking allows for the food to be a lot more tender, the meat will be more tender and tasty. So they're gonna create little fires like this using the charcoal. So here we are at another one of Munjo's cafes. <laughs> this is the first one. This is the first one yeah. where the journey of my yeah. restaurant so business started. See, he's so kind. I told him that I like iced coffee and he's like, we have to go to my cafe that has iced coffee because the other one was a sweet shop. So he was insisting that we come here just so I can have my iced coffee. Too, 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 you're too kind, man. Too much of a gentleman. Uh, but we're, now we're going to try some coffee so I can finally wake up. Finally, a coffee. Okay, so usually when I've been getting iced coffee here, it's been blended. But you're the first person that I, the first cafe I went to that they made proper iced coffee. Usually when you say iced coffee in, in Bangladesh, they, they, blend they blend it. I don't like the blended. This is a real iced coffee, guys. They gotta mix it up. This is actually, technically, this is an iced cappuccino. So, it's gonna be my honest taste test. So yeah, please. yeah, please. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a coffee connoisseur. My audience knows. I rate coffee everywhere I go. So, here we go. Cheers. It's good. You know, the beans are very good. Yeah. Freshly brewed mm -hmm. and roasted by soil. Well, one thing I can say is Manju definitely is a coffee fanatic himself. Yeah. So, somebody who actually likes to drink coffee themselves, they're going to make sure that their coffee is good. And you can tell, this coffee is actually really good. It's brewed right, the bean strong, you can taste the bean. Sometimes the milk overpowers the bean, but in this case, you can still taste the bean. And it's perfect. I am, I am satisfied. If you guys ever come to Bangladesh, whether you're in Dhaka or in Chittagong, this uh, barcode cafe is available uh, in Dhaka and in Chittagong. So feel free to stop in. Anybody who's a coffee lover, I'm sure you will enjoy it. Now we are finally going to eat what we what you saw me cooking, what you saw us cooking this morning. We're gonna try it now. Oh, that's another one. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So these guys are eating some nali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. This is the final product. This is the chana dal with the beef. Look at how good that looks, man. This right here is the mezban, the star of the show. The George Clooney, the Brad Pitt, the Angelina Jolie. This is what everybody comes for. You got some rice, of course. Kalabuna. This one is the most wanted. This is the most wanted. Yeah. Ah, okay. Kalabuna. Yes. It's like a little bit more dry. Yeah. Less less soup. Very tasty. But very tasty. And now it's time to do my favorite thing, which is eat it. <laughs> cow cow cow. No, it like cow cow. Huh? Shuno. Cow. 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 Cow means eat. Cow means eat, yeah. Cow eat, eat cow. Cow look like that, oh. The mezban. Then, if you take some dal. Some dal. Okay. And trust me, you'll remember this meal. Oh, I've been a long, long time. I, I believe you. And that's the what is Kalaguna. it called? Huh? Kalaguna. Kalaguna. Look at that. There it is, guys. We're gonna do it like real Bangladeshi style. I'm not gonna be an American today and eat with the spoon. Today we're gonna be Bangladesh. So, what do I start with? Just some rice. Let's try this one first. You said this is the most, the, the most like people come here for this one, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go. You can explore why. Okay. First, you can try this one. Okay, let's try this one. So this one is the mezban. This yeah. is this is the what the restaurant is named after. Look at how tender that piece of beef is. You can squeeze it. Mm. And this takes hours to make. They start at seven in the morning, like I showed you earlier. This is not an easy process. This is amazing, yeah? I'm so confident when I'm not eating yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not worried at all. I mean, I'm confident if somebody doesn't like it, means 
he doesn't like me. Maybe. Me means like he doesn't like food. Right. Food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> means like they don't understand food if they don't like this. Meat sweet. Look at right. this, man. So basically, that one that I just ate is the one with the soup that I showed you. Now this one that I'm about to take a bite of, this is a bit drier. It's still, still very tender. Still has some juice, but not that curry kind of soup. So this right here is a dried beef. Not dry, but a bit more dry. Mm. Mm. Good. You start biting. Yeah. Keep it in the mouth and bite. The more you bite, the more taste it comes. Yeah. There's so much flavor, but so balanced at the same time. It's not overly spicy. So anybody who doesn't eat spicy food, you can still enjoy this. It's so, so, so good, man. I want to say which one I like better than the other, but honestly, they're both amazing. I think they're both at the same level for me. So the meat that they put inside this, uh, the chana dal, yeah. is that from this one? It's the, no, it's, it's separate. It's only bone. Okay. Bones and stuff. Inside the dal. Yeah. Let's try the dal. So guys, I'm not very good at eating with my hands, as you can see. I'm, an, I'm a rookie. But when in Bangladesh, you have to eat like the Bangladesh. Yeah. Mm. There's something so special <coughs> about slow cooking, about taking your time when cooking. The flavors that build up in those pots when you take your time, when it takes hours, there's nothing like that. Any dish that's prepared over a long period of time is always going to be more flavorful than something that's whipped up quickly. And you can really, really taste the broth inside of this food. This is soul food. It goes straight to your soul. And I am in love. Guys like Food Ranger, Mark Weens, they've all said amazing things about this. Very trusted sources. But now you're hearing it from the most trusted source, Meyer Travels. <laughs> And you know, put and just he said, this is one of the best beef format I have ever tried. Really? Yeah. One of the best forms of beef that he's yeah. ever tried. The food ranger. I mean, if that's not a trusted source, I don't know who is. Wow. I'm gonna enjoy this, guys. Oh. So, one interesting thing that I, I don't know if I mentioned this about the food, but this is a traditional Chittagonian, not just Bangladeshi, but in this city, this is a traditional food. And it actually stems from long traditions. So, it actually started off as a food that they would eat at funerals. So it was made in big, big portions for people who would come to attend funerals and they would serve it. But over time, through tradition, it ended up becoming a celebratory food. So when people gather, when people... So since he was a kid, He's been trying this food. So he grew up eating this food. It's a, it's a part of the tradition. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. And these are the kind of experiences that you can't get in different places. You have to come to the source here in Chittagong. So make sure if you guys ever come to this city, do not leave until you try Mezban. And if you're gonna try it, you have to come here. Guys, honestly, the best food I've tried in Bangladesh, by far. If you come to Chittagong, make sure you try Mezban. I'm glad I was able to show you guys the whole process, the whole experience, just from literally from the pot to the table. And thank you so much, Manju, for this experience. And guys, if you're ever here in Chittagong, make sure you come hit this place up. You will not regret it. And it will be a memory that will last a lifetime. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Remember, continue to learn, continue to grow. And there is no growth until you leave your comfort zone. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.